Alright, straight to the point, there's a lot of console players switching to PC gaming, but don't know where to start. Well, what's up guys, Prodigy here, and today I'm going to get 5 tips for gamers switching from console to PC. And just for a disclaimer, if you're not new to PC gaming, then this video might not be for you. Also, this is just a simple guide for beginners, but if you want more tips for PC gaming, you can check out my video on the top right corner. Anyways, let's get right to it. Alright, now first things first, memorize and customize keybinds, and honestly, I'm quite surprised when I see people not doing this because this is probably the most important tip on this list. Because when it comes to PC gaming and just console gaming in general, you're not really going to be looking at your hands in a game, as your attention should be focused on the gameplay. But if you're switching from a controller to a keyboard and mouse for the first time, you're most likely going to get confused with the controls. Well, one thing that you should know is that most keybinds are the same for most games, like WASD is for moving, SHIFT is for sprinting, R is for reloading, C or control is for crouching and so on. But you gotta keep in note that not every game is gonna have the same keybinds. So depending on the game that you're playing, you're gonna have to learn the controls for it, which is pretty much common sense. But similar to how you can change your controller layout in some games for console, you can customize your keybinds in different games for PC to suit your needs. Now, if you have trouble with figuring out the right keybinds for you, depending on your game, there are a ton of keybinding guides on YouTube. Whether you wanna learn some keybinds for Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, Call of Duty, or more. But if you're looking to maybe copy the keybinds of your favorite a streamer or a pro player, something that most new players overlook is that just because those pro players are amazing with their keybinds doesn't mean that you're going to do good with them. The most important thing that you got to know is that it's all about how comfortable you are with the controls. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't consider watching some keybinding guide videos as some are pretty useful, but just know that you shouldn't expect immediate results as it does take some time getting used to controls. But ultimately, you want to customize your keybinds to whatever is comfortable and easily accessible to you. And you want to try and memorize those keybinds so you don't need to look at them while playing. And I'll be sure to link some keybinding guide videos down below to better help those of you struggling. Moving on to tip number 2, FPS versus graphics. Now, unlike console games, PC games allow you to change multiple different graphics settings that you couldn't change on console. And these settings can range from texture resolution, shadows, anti-aliasing, and more to improve the look of your game. However, all these things come at a cost, and that's performance. Because in most cases, FPS and graphics share an inverse relationship. The higher the graphics, the lower the FPS, and the lower the graphics, the higher the the FPS. So in general, it's all going to be personal preference as you got to find the right balance to fit your needs when changing your graphics settings. So if you have a rather low power computer, you may want to lower your graphics settings so your games can run smoother. Or if you have a beast of a gaming PC, you may want to turn them up so your game looks as best as possible if it doesn't affect your FPS that much. And when it comes to settings, there are two main ways of changing them. One is through your normal game's options, and two is from your GPU's control panel, like GeForce Experience for Nvidia cards or Radeon software for AMD cards. And if you're feeling lazy, some games will optimize your settings for you depending on the PC specs you have. And although this method will give you a good enough experience in the beginning, I definitely recommend learning more about settings and learn what each setting does so you can potentially get better performance out of your games and tweak the things that matter the most to you. But overall, this barely scratches the surface of settings that you can find and change to your liking. So I'll be sure to link some videos for you guys to learn more on game settings. Moving on to tip number 3, which I'm still surprised that some people haven't considered this, you can use your controller on PC. Now, of course, this is situational as it would be recommended to use a keyboard and mouse for most shooters and games in general as you get more accuracy and precision that way. But obviously, most people are going to prefer to play some games with a controller like Rocket League, maybe GTA 5, different single player games, and more. Which, if you're still not used to using a keyboard and mouse, you could just plug in your controller and play that way as it's just like if you were playing on a console. But eventually, slowly transition into playing keyboard and mouse. And that's honestly one of the best things about PC gaming as you have the option to either use a keyboard a mouse or a controller depending on your game. Now obviously, if you plan on playing competitively in a heavily keyboard and mouse type game, it's going to be recommended to use a keyboard and mouse. But that doesn't exactly mean that you're going to be bad if you use a controller, because there's actually a lot of pro players that use controllers on PC for different games like Fortnite, Warzone, Apex, and more. So at the end of the day, if you're mainly a controller player, by all means, you can use a controller to play some games that support it, but eventually, you do want to try and get used to keyboard and mouse. Now before we move on to the next tip, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Luster. Luster is a free Chrome extension that helps you shop for the best products at the lowest prices for you. And they do this by gathering different information from the best export sources on the internet, analyzing key features and reviews, and then they finally rank thousands of competing products based on how well they fit your budget. And I personally love this extension mostly because this is a great tool for anyone that wants to find some of the best products around their budget. And this extension is easy
easy to use and only takes a single click to install. But if you're interested in getting this free extension to find the best deals on different products and such, I'll be sure to leave a link down below. Now near the end, we got tip number 4 and that's practicing. And there's multiple different ways to practice, whether you want to try out some aiming simulators, going into the firing range or training mode of whatever game you want to play, or even just running some casual matches. Which trust me, if you try to hop into competitive play immediately without being fully comfortable with mouse and keyboard, you're not going to do that well. So depending on what you need to work on, whether that's aiming or fully getting used to the controls of said game, try and dedicate about 10 minutes or so every day to practicing. Another thing that you could do if you're still feeling uncomfortable with your keyboard is practice typing. Now this may sound weird to some people, but if you practice typing using any keyboard typing website like 10 Fast Fingers or TypeRacer.com, the more familiar your hands are going to be when on the keyboard, and it'll be easier to hit the key binds on your keyboard, which the average person types about 40 words per minute. So if you go into a typing game and get less than that, then that might mean that you might want to improve your speed. Which for me personally, I normally average around 50 to 65 words per minute, which I think is pretty alright for me. But some of my friends type on average over 100 words per minute, which is really good. But overall, if you practice typing along with practicing your aim and such through aiming simulators, and just playing training or casual mode in PC games, you're definitely going to improve with using keyboard and mouse over time. And finally, for tip number 5, don't give up easily, which this is something that a lot of people do because either they don't get it instantly or they tried all these tips and still see no improvement. Well the thing is, when trying out keyboard and mouse for the first time, especially if you're primarily a console player, discomfort is pretty normal when trying out keyboard and mouse. I mean, you gotta be uncomfortable before you get comfortable, which this goes for anything in life. Because not everyone is gonna get the hang of it quickly because getting good on keyboard and mouse is hard and time consuming. Which for me personally, when I first started playing some PC games for casual fun, I found it extremely hard because as a console player, you're mostly using your right hand or your controller when it comes to shooting, moving, or pressing buttons. But on PC, you're mostly using your left hand for those functions for the WSD keys and other keybinds, while your right hand controls your mouse. So basically, you're technically trying to get your left hand to do everything that your right hand was doing. Which if you're right handed, try writing your name with your right hand and then writing it again with your left hand. You're going to see that your right hand is obviously better because you're used to it. So my general point here is that yes, although switching to keyboard and mouse can be a struggle, don't give up easily because as long as you keep on practicing on the fundamentals of memorizing your keybinds and working on your aim, you'll definitely improve. Which as a quote from my friend Moz, slow growth is better than no growth. But after going over all that, that'll be the end of my 5 tips for console players switching to PC gaming. And trust me, if you follow all these tips and make sure to keep practicing, you'll definitely get better when it comes to PC gaming. Which if you haven't done so already, I actually made a different video for 5 tips for new PC gamers where I go over a lot of different info that I didn't mention here. So if you want more tips for getting into PC gaming, I'll be sure to link that and other different videos and sites in the description to give more help for each tip. And if you guys got any more questions or want a dedicated video on any of these tips, just drop a comment down below and I'll try my best to get to them. But I think that's gonna wrap it up and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, drop a like and subscribe for more quality content like this because I do love making videos like this one. Also, comment down below any tips or ideas new PC gamers can do to get better as I know everyone's gonna have their own opinions on the matter. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Also, I do want to thank you guys because recently we passed 50,000 subscribers, which is honestly insane to me because I've been doing YouTube for so long and this past year has been the most amount of growth I've ever gotten. So thank you guys for all the support and make sure to tell your friends to check out my channel as my content is primarily helping people with their gaming setups and just showing up budget tech in general. Also, come join my Discord because I definitely want to try and grow a community where people can just hang out, talk about setups and other budget builds and more. So if you're interested in joining, there'll be a link in the description. But anyways guys, thanks for watching and be sure to have notifications on so you won't miss any of my videos. My name's J, and as always, stay classy. Thank you.